My name is Ed Nardi, Chair of the Natural Resources Commission, and I'm calling this public meeting to order at 7 p.m. Tonight's NRC meeting will be a hybrid in-person and Zoom meeting. We have a microphone set up on the commission table and plans will be projected through the TV monitor. If you are presenting via Zoom, please turn on your audio and microphone when it is time for you to speak. Following the presentation by the petitioner and questions from the commission, members of the public will have the opportunity to ask questions and provide public comment. Please identify yourself with name and address for the record. You can also raise your hand from your phone by dialing star nine and use star six to unmute. All video screens will be turned off with the exception of the commissioners, Delia and Bert, and the current petitioner. Once the commission has acted on an application, the petitioner is free to leave the meeting. This meeting is being recorded. In the event of any technical difficulties, all matters on the agenda that have not been heard will be automatically continued to the July 19th NRC meeting. At this time, I would ask the commissioners to introduce themselves. Uh, Bill Kermesa. Gary Kleiman. Nick Pappas. Thank you, guys. Um, all right. Um, before we get going, I just want to make a, a brief announcement in regard to one of the applications this evening that was going to be heard is going to be continued until July 19th, and that is ADHU Cargill Road uh, Notice of Intent. Um, so didn't want to waste anybody's time if they happen to be listening in or here for that particular application. All right, approval of the March 15th, 2023 meeting minutes and uh, both regular and executive session. Um, uh, I just had a comment that I passed along to Karen, minor in nature. Um, any other comments? I had none. No. Okay. I did not, however, get the April 5th meeting minutes. Just looking at this now, because Celia is the one that sent out the other stuff. So okay. we'll just take So we'll hold it. We'll, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, good. So we'll hold that over. Okay. Um, uh, Nick, any comments on the meeting oh. minutes from you? Okay. Could I have a motion for the March 15th? I move that we accept the uh, minutes for March 15th. Do we need to do regular and executive session separately, or if you just if you just note the two and the, the regular and the executive session? I second. All right, Bill. Aye. Gary. Aye. Nick. Aye. And I am an I as well. Uh, any comments from the commissioners in general in nature? No. All right. Having no. none. The assistant director's update, please. Uh, just one thing. We had our. Um, community workshop on the Asper River Bluff property a couple of weeks back. Um, had about 30 people attend that, so a pretty good turnout. Um, discussed a uh, few things, but the biggest topics I'd say were parking, um, where it's being all persons trail, the only current public parking um, is about, I wanna say a quarter mile away. So we're looking mm. to try to get some parking closer, um, just some handicap accessible spots. So our initial thought was to have those off Upland Road, but there's some concern about that um, neighborhood concerns and safety concerns. So we're looking at some alternative locations on that one. Um, and then we just spoke about the um, the trail layout and the connection to the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail. So the whole thing was just sort of to guide the design process when, when we get to that point, which will be in the fairly near future. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Bert. All right, so if I could have a motion for the one continuance. Um, I move that we continue DEP file 137, 1640, 54 Lawsbrook Road. Oh, no, I think it's the. This is, this is to be current. Oh, oh, that one. Sorry. Uh, oh, that. Okay. Uh, I move that we continue ADH Hugh Cargill Road, DEP file 1371645 to July 19. Yes. Good. I second that. Thank you, Bill. The vote, Bill. Aye. Gary? Aye. Nick? Aye. And I'm an aye as well. All right. So the first continuous will be heard this evening is uh, 54 Lawsburg Road, DEP file 137-1640. Who's with us this evening to discuss this? Good evening, Dan Wells from LEC Environmental. Good evening, Dan. Uh, I'm so I was before the commission three weeks ago, a single family home addition project, 54 Lodgebrook Road, and the commission had three requests for updating the plan. 
I'm happy to share and show you that, or just it's pretty simple. I can just describe it yeah, to you. That'd be fine. Okay, the commission was interested. In, initially, the project proposed uh, planting a bunch of high bush blueberry shrubs, and the commission requested some more diversity to the plantings. So we added winterberry and sweet pepper bush to the mix. So it seems they're pretty appropriate you know, commonly planted native buffer zone species. So we felt that's appropriate for the location. The second part was the commission requested that the owner remove part of the fence on both sides of the property that's within the 25 foot no disturbed zone. So the plan has a note falling out of the sections to be removed. And finally, the commission requested uh, some operation and ma maintenance instructions for maintaining the permeable uh, pavers. And that was added to the plan. There's some details regarding inspecting and vacuuming it twice a year and um, potentially power washing. So that's been added to the plan. So we feel we've addressed the three concerns or questions by the commission. Thank you, Dan. Um, any comments from the commission? No, it covers everything. Yeah. Nick, you good? Okay. Uh, I didn't, I didn't yeah, I think he did not. Yeah. Any any uh, public comment regarding this application? Don't see any. Okay. With that, I, I do believe we have an order of conditions prepared. So I move that we close and issue an order of conditions for DEP file one three seven one six four zero. Uh, 54 Lawsbrook Road with findings A and B and standard conditions 1 through 20 and special conditions 21 through 53. Bill, do I have a second? I second that, yeah. Thank you, sir. And the vote, Bill? Aye. Jerry? Aye. Nick? I saw his aye, and I'm an aye as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Okay, thank you all very much. Yeah, good yeah, luck good with luck. the project. All right. Uh, the next continuance up this evening is 170. Oh, no, I'm jumping the gun. 154 Southfield Road. And that's uh, a notice of intent for DEP file 137 1641. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So I am Seth Donahoe with Bills and Roy Civil Design Group. This is Kevin, the applicant and homeowner. Uh, we were at your last meeting mm -hmm. and discussed um, a proposed addition to the house as along with a patio that went in place um, after a prior DDP file number. And the commission had some questions, concerns, and general comments related to mitigation that was being proposed to um, take care of the patio. So after uh, the meeting, uh, Kevin and Tina's wife they have agreed to remove a portion of the patio. And so that's indicated on the plan. It's a little blurry there, but it's the area directly behind the house. Um, the small portion to the side <clears throat> will remain still. And as this is a um, kind of a, do you have a question? Yeah, I just, I'm curious. I see the two blocks. Is that is that line down the middle suggest, is that telling me where they correct? So the one on the left is, is going and the yeah. one on the right is staying? That is yeah. correct, sir. Um, and one of the things is this is kind of a, a mix of what was approved, what's happened, and what's being approved yeah. right now. Yeah. It, you guys have asked for some clarification, essentially a breakdown of these areas. So on the bottom of the plan under the locust map, we've given you a tabulation of both areas within the 50-foot buffer zone that are to remain and be mitigated for. And then we've also have a tabulation of areas within the 50 to 100 foot buffer zone um, that are also to be mitigated for. And so we've broken down those complete areas. There's some hatching on the detail above. Um, I think it's pretty self-explanatory though. But the concern the commission had is that the previously uh, proposed mitigation did not meet the uh, current requirement of five to one for structures within the 50 foot buffer zone. And uh, Bert was nice enough to alert me that one to one is required in the 50 to 100 foot buffer zone. So we've completely accounted for that. And there's a substantial mitigation planting area at the rear of the site. And that's entirely within the 25 foot buffer zone. And we've broken down those calculations for you. 
So we're proposing 1,660 square feet of total mitigation area on this site. That's an existing lawn area entirely within the 25 foot buffer zone that's to be converted to a naturalized planting area. Um, historically, this site has been um, completely lawn, essentially from the back of the house yeah. all the way to the resource area. So this is a, a big improvement over, over what's there. And even if the patio were to be removed in its entirety, uh, the mitigation numbers would go down substantially and that vegetative buffer would therefore be reduced as well. So I hope this is agreeable to the commission. I know um, Kevin and Tina apologized. It, it was a oversight on their part, um, like events and things happened during that time and they didn't realize that this was a modification that they couldn't do. So their apology was sincere and, and we hope that bringing this up to the current requirements is something that um, the commission will be willing to work with them on. Okay, thank you. So I guess just speaking directly to that. So, and, and we, we understand mistakes get made, so. That's life, but but that being said, it's still a fifty foot no build area, and what was got built without our knowledge or I'm not sure whose knowledge other than the homeowners and contractors. And I guess the problem I I, I still have is that you're leaving things in the fifty foot no build that we wouldn't allow. For example, anything that you know any of those structures. I don't know if that's a barbecue or a fireplace. I'm not exactly sure what that structure is, and the retaining walls. You know, under the under the policy, as you've read the policy, anything foundation wise construed as a structure where you'd normally get a building permit, but requires a foundation would, wouldn't be allowed. It does say in the 50 foot no build zone that we would, depending on the circumstances of any particular project, consider a patio. Um, but we wouldn't consider those structures. Um, and again, I think it was framed in the context of if this had come before us for approval, what would we have approved? And I think at best we would have approved a simple patio. Okay, I, I think um, to put the mitigation in context here, it's 13% of their property. We talked last time that this isn't a huge lot. Um, essentially, this is a, a finger of wetlands that's between the two adjacent streets, fairly thin. So this mitigation area, I, I think, would be extremely valuable and that it's it's certainly enhancing the, a, a minimal buffer that already exists throughout the neighborhood. You know, I, 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 I no doubt mitigation is always valued and always appreciated. But we're talking about a about a 50 foot no build zone that, you know, the, the commission has been very try to try to hold, uh, you know, true to uh, with exceptions um, from time to time. And I don't think we want to be a commission that is a commission of forgiveness. It's a commission of trying to, you know, promote our policy and uh, appropriately enforce the policy depending on the circumstances. Um, so I think that's the rub um, is that, you know, and the, and the commission has to be very mindful of setting precedent. Somebody else certainly can make a mistake. And if we just simply look at mistakes and say, well, okay, we edged around it a little bit and reduced the mistake, but we simply allow that mistake to stay, uh, I believe that's a significant problem. I understand, but in this case, the cure, um, if they were to remove those structures in their entirety, the mitigation area is substantially reduced. We understand that. I thousand square feet. understand that as well. So then the end result of it is that they still have a lawn that goes almost all the way up to the resource area, whereas they're willing to give up a huge portion of their backyard yeah. as part of this. I, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a trade-off issue. I think it's just a policy issue and, and not setting precedent. I think that's the issue at hand. Not necessarily is mitigation trading off for that that issue. I think that's that's the issue at hand. Um, so certainly a patio again, it's up. You know, to, to debate with the other commissioners, but I think of, I think we can certainly, you know, accept a permeable patio uh, in that area. So, but I don't think, I really don't think the structures are going to can stand the test of of our policy. And do you have a feeling on that, or I just I didn't get. I wish you had said that last time we I, met. I, I did. I said I, I you didn't say that. I you didn't say this, the 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 fireplace and the walls. What I what I wanted to see them come down. What we would have no 
wasted our time kind of going back to the drawing board trying to figure this out. What I what I said last time was something to the effect that from time to time the commission, which doesn't allow structures in the 50, but has from time to time accepted patios, depending on the circumstances, within the 50. Um, so didn't don't want to waste your time, but I, I believe that we we talked about that. And if you read the 50 foot no build policy, I think it's pretty clear in there what is acceptable and what's not acceptable and what may be accepted from time to time, which is a patio. Okay, can I can I in, in an effort to kind of bring this to a point where everyone can move on? Can I ask the other commission members, do you all feel the same on that? Yeah, I do actually. I, I hadn't, you know, I, I, I actually didn't focus as much until I, I see the picture now and didn't focus on it before at, uh, at, on the fireplace. Um, uh, but that, that is a major structure on that side. And I remember Ed speaking about it. Um, so that is, that is something that seems um, difficult to approve. Yeah, I mean, my concern is just with the, are we inviting people to ask for forgiveness rather than, you know, if, if we allow it to remain as an unpermitted structure that's on, you know, in the 50 foot, are we inviting people to go ahead and do it and then, you know, ask for forgiveness because, oh, well, you've done that in the past. So I have concerns about that. But um, I do appreciate a significant amount of mitigation. Um, so it's hard to sort of recognize that that might go away because that would be great for the wetlands. But um, I do have, so I'm, I'm sort of of two minds here. But I think one thing that's important on this too is is the prior DEP approval for the house. Um, the house is entirely within the 100 foot buffer zone and that allowed for structures to be 43 feet from the wetlands under that approval. Uh, so, so the commission's prior approval on this very site allowed for a reduced setback um, to structures. It doesn't make up for the patio. I'm not saying that at all, but they're working with what they got. They take very good care of their property. Yeah, I can um, see that. But it isn't really just the patio, is it? It's it's the structure. It's the structure. It's, yeah, it's the it's the huge structure. That's it's, the retain, it's the retaining yeah. wall and the, the, and the wall and I don't the, know if it's the, a fireplace, the or barbecue, fireplace or whatever. Fireplace. So if, you the, if we remove all the the patio and the walls and the fireplace, will there be will we still be required to do any mitigation in here? I don't believe so. I mean that that's that's the it, kind of the crux of this issue. So You're take. Saying, you, there's a ton of plants going in here along yeah. along the wall. It's not a trade-off issue. I'm just saying. I'm just. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a landscape contractor. I appreciate that, that. Doesn't make any sense to me. That's okay. okay. It's it's it's, that, it, it's it's. I'm willing to to put a ton of plants in there and do. I understand. That right now the grass goes right to the water. I, I understand. That just doesn't make sense. I understand. But okay. our, our our mandate is not to protect this, you know, hundred foot strip of wetlands. Our mandate is to protect all of the wetland resources in Concord. And so that's what we're trying to think about is like the trade off of down the road. Are we going to be losing bit by bit all around Concord if we invite people to ask for forgiveness right. rather than. I and, get that. I'm yeah. just saying the plantings are much more beneficial to this property if you're concerned with the wetlands. Exactly why I have trouble sort of. <laughs> that makes no sense. I think I also in our little neighbor, I don't know if you guys have driven through Southfield lately or in the 20 yeah. years that Kevin and I have Excuse me, if, if, if you could. Oh, Tina Labadini, 154 Southfield Road. Okay, Tina, next oh. time you just put your hand up. Thank you. Oh, Go I'm ahead. sorry. Um, I think our neighborhood has gone through extreme change in the past 20 years. I've been very involved <laughs> in protecting our um, land to building ratio. And I think it is really important. I, I, do, I do struggle. Um, with the hypocrisy of a, a fireplace and a stone wall in comparison to the humongous houses that surround our tiny renovated Cape. Um, one going up right now that clearly got a lot of exceptions to move much closer to the road than most houses to avoid the creek. So I just think we need to be really careful about the destruction that's gonna be caused. I mean, I. That fireplace is is a beautiful asset to our house, and I 
I just don't think this is a fair ask. Well, I appreciate that, Tina, but it, 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 in all fairness to the commission, if you had come before the commission before you did the work without permission, uh, as we said, we, we have to weigh what we would have typically looked at and reviewed that and, and whether we would have approved it or not. And I think the, the simple answer is we wouldn't have approved it in the first place. So we come back to the very kind of full circle. It's setting precedent, precedent. Um, and that's not something I don't think the commission can take a chance on doing. It opens up the door for other people to do that in the future, and the commission will have really no standing to say no, follow the policy because we've we've set precedent. Right. I get that. I think that when I try to figure out how this happened and how we missed this, step and guideline to people that are so involved in the community is because of these humongous houses that were surrounded with it didn't even occur to me that a patio would be an issue where our house is 2500 square foot and there's 7000 square foot houses surrounding our house it really didn't occur to me that that would be a problem on these tiny lots because it's it's so small in comparison to what we're doing to the earth with these big houses no okay I appreciate that. And I, and I just assume every house has its own individual circumstance um, in terms of their considerations of setbacks to wetlands or landscaping, et cetera. So I can't certainly can't speak to the other other houses being built in your neighborhood at the moment. Uh, any 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 further thoughts in I, terms of I mean we we brought this board as as what we would what we see in a subjective, but basically a net improvement environmentally to a fairly constrained area. Um, and what I'm hearing from the commission here is that the precedents that you're worried about setting um, basically over well, overrides the environmental benefits that are proposed. So if this is something that we're at a stalemate on, uh, we can certainly discuss and see what we can modify. Okay. Um, I, I don't think you're ready to walk away from it yet. I'll rip it all out. I have no problem ripping it out. Okay. It's just absolutely mind blowing. Well, like, you're going to do that. It just blows my mind. It's, I hope you can understand. You can take no, it. No, I can't. Okay. Well, I, I mean, imagine someone that owns a larger property, for example, and they do some work in the 50 and they come in and say, sorry, it was a mistake. But what if we, what if we do two acres of, you know, Beautiful plantings, natural plantings as as an offset. You know, you can take it to an extreme, right? But again, it's 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 a policy that we're trying to, you know, follow. Okay. And it's very important so we don't set precedent because it because we don't know where those those other cases will come from. But again, we'll diminish our standing and have really no leg to stand on because they'll point to this case and say, if you did it for them. You really have to do it for us. Gotcha. I just think it's I just think it's just a dangerous precedent for the certainly for the NRC. I understand well, that. I think part of the thing here is I mean, this occurred in 2008, a time before the town even had their bylaw in place. That's not that is not true. That 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 policy is closing in on 20 years, oh, maybe. But the, the wetland bylaw wasn't adopted till 2009 here, I believe. Oh, I think that was a revision of the wetland bylaw. Yeah, no, the wetland bylaw has been around for quite a while. Yeah, I mean, Bert, you might be able to speak to it, but that was our commission many, many, many years yeah. ago. Okay, but my point on this is that this is this is not something that they did recent. This is in the distant past. Here, it wouldn't even come to light if they weren't thinking of doing an addition on their house now. Um, well, I I had heard it was done in I think last last meeting somebody said it was done in 2015. I'm not sure. I mean. My involvement in the property has not been that far back, but no, it was done right after the addition in 2008. All right. Well, then more to the point and not not to go down the rabbit hole. But if you at that point, I think you were in front of the NRC back then for the addition. Correct. I believe so. Yeah, were we? I don't remember. Yes. But yes. OK. And, and I think at that point, it was certainly clear that there was you know, concern and setback considerations, the 43 feet and et cetera. So I'm sure that was discussed and 
at that point in time. So there must have been, at least at that moment in time, some knowledge about the setbacks and those considerations back then. And so if it was done on the heels of that, I guess I would have real concern because you just came out of an NRC meeting with trying to understand those kind of setbacks and those considerations, just to be candid. Okay. All right. But that's a building, not stone walls and a patio, which I understand we've not followed the rules, but didn't realize then that a patio and stone walls was the same rules. Okay. And again, I we, we certainly appreciate that it was a mistake and it was a it was a honest mistake and they certainly happen, but then again, there's there's also, you know, at times repercussions for a mistake as well. And unfortunately, you know, it's not something the commission prefers to do, but again, we think it's an important issue here. And I guess uh, it's all right with you we'll ask to continue this, um, discuss what options, and if, if it's something that you don't want to do at all, we can we can figure out um, how to resolve things. Okay. Yep. Yep. Again, if you want to if you want to think about keeping a portion of the patio there or whatnot, that's certainly I think on the table. I have a feeling you probably hate the patio at this point. Well, we already proposed that. I mean, you know. What are our choices at this? What are our choices if we want to get a permit to put an addition on our house? To put an addition on your house? Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's what I think we're toward. Well, this to light. I mean, at, yeah. at the last meeting, I don't think there was really any objection to the addition at all. It's it's almost entirely within the, the footprint the of the house. Yeah. There's one square foot that's within the 50 foot buffer zone. Mm -hmm. um, and they have a previous setback of 43 square feet, right. 43 feet. Right. So, I mean, this is and well about, within what they've been allowed to do on this property. Right. And I think the only issue with on that side of the uh, the house is it just got to cut back that deck, correct? I think the deck was extended. Yeah, behind. there's a deck that's can't leave it over and they're willing to remove that. And, and none of that removal has been deducted from what we're proposing to mitigate under this. But that yeah. seems to be off the table at this point. Yeah. Yeah. What are we going to use to, to hold the land in place <clears throat> where the walls are? What was there before? I don't know. It's just dirt. Um, it's so we been built that. up. It's been built up by our neighbors now on the other side, too. Because that house was rebuilt <clears throat> next to us. Yeah. What um what what are our choices? I'm I'm lost. Well, like Again, we're not, you know, we're not really a design group here. So, I mean, I guess you could take a look at it. Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't know the situation on the ground well enough to offer any suggestions at the moment. I don't know how you get that not to erode into the after everything comes down. Well, I have to look at the neighbor's property, and that's that's really what it comes down to. They, they, I'm expecting that the neighbor's house was built up before the town's current height requirements were in place, as those are only a few years old. Yeah. Uh, well, I think there's always been height requirements well, the, under the, the average, zoning the bylaws. Average, the average grade plane has. Oh, I see. Several I times see. over the year, and okay, and this neighborhood in particular. I mean, I, I remember driving around as I've worked on some of these properties, and basically they've mounded up. I see. Um, many of the new builds um, and that's been changed by the town's current rules but i've been <clears> expecting that they were able to mount up on the property next year too gotcha so my is it the big the big structural problem for us is the fireplace we've got fireplace and you've got retaining walls retaining wall. yeah so that's what has to be looked at i think yeah. you might be able to grade away from it and and then and then if, you know then we'll be open to a partial patio yeah yeah sure and that's fair. So you're saying that the only way for us to move forward is to take out the walls and the fireplace? Yes, <clears throat> that's what they're saying. That, that's what we're saying at the moment, yes. Those portions that are within the 50? Yes, of course. Within the 50 only. Let me go out for public comment. Is there any public comment? Regarding the application, it doesn't really apply to this situation we're dealing with now. The one thing that I think you're saying is um, precedent, precedent, precedent. It may help you down the field, it, down the road, if you have a job like this that you're proven and someone's like, well, you let them do it, you have to let us. You don't. 
every job by every project by a commission or board, except for zoning commission, can go back and say, well, that was a special case. It was different because A, B, and C. And I've used that several times on board health. My understanding, and you may want to check with town council or the town administrator, is that no board can set, other than zoning, can set a um, precedent that has to be a precedent. Oh. It may help me down the road. Thank you for that. Appreciate the comment. Any further comments? Anybody out online? Part? No. Okay. I don't see anything. All right, so we'd like to continue the 19th, but okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice night. You too. All right, for the our next continuance this evening is a notice of intent for 178 East Bridge Road, DEP file 137-1642. They just said, uh, just said he's nearing representing the homeowner. I think I shot myself in the foot. I just started. <laughs> That's it. One of those things that we battled with on Board of Health and that um, we used that as our that's a couple of times. Um, so if you remember, we were here because there was no mitigation um, for a septic system that yes. was proposed mm -hmm. um, that had to be installed inside the field because that's where it is and there's plumbing and things like that that can avoid it. Um, so there were a few things that were mentioned on that plan. You can see uh, this is the revised plan. Um, first thing that was brought up was the septic tank was moved uh, a little bit further from the 25, so there's room to do the actual excavation. Um, there was a question about what the access route is, and that is now shown on the plan. And then you'll see the other item is the um, the planting. We worked with um, town and came up with an idea for planting um, more of a more of just a, it's not a grass seed obviously, but more of a wetland mix or a upland wetland mix, whatever it is. And uh, uh, staff thought that that might be a um, there might be a concern from the commission that that would be and just end up going back to grass. So he suggested looking at something different, maybe planting. So uh, planting some shrubs. So um, that's what we did. There's a calculation on the plan. I don't think we need to go into details unless you want to. It's all in front of you, and it's on this um, yep. variance here where we calculate the uh, you know the um, the mitigation required, um, and then the um, five times the, oh, the 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 work in the 50 foot. No build zone, the mitigation required, deducting and moving the existing septic tank, and we came up with uh, 21 shrubs. Um, there was a list provided to with the A's submittal that says pick something from here. Homer was going to go to a local nursery, say I need something off this list, or they probably know what would work in this situation. Yep. So yeah. that's you good with that, Bert? Yeah, the list was all made. It's all okay. right. It's yep. uh, I think it's good. It's good. All right. Okay. Oh, right. hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, so when I say staff, I was working with Bert, who was helpful in this. Right. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate you, you know, pushing the tank away so you can get that get that hole dug and yeah. stay out of the 25s. Um, you probably need a 25. You might, might need a waiver on this too to work in the 25. There was, the, there was a waiver request. Yeah. Was there? Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. All right, great. Yeah. So okay. thank you for that. I think you have touched all the bases, Bill. Okay. Yeah, hearing yeah, they're oh. good. The yeah. Is good. Any questions? Any public comments, or are we all set? I don't know. I just look at it. Nick. Oh, Nick. Nick, you good? Okay. Uh, any public comment? Not seeing anything. All here. right. I think with that, uh, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll move that we uh, close the hearing and um, issue a spe the special conditions with findings A and B and standard conditions one through twenty. With special conditions, this is for, by the way, I'm sorry, DEP file 137-1642-178 Heath Bridge Road, and with special conditions 21 through 52. Second. All right. Thank you. And aye. the vote. Aye. Aye. Nick? Aye. And aye. I am an aye as well. Okay. Thanks for your time. Good luck with the project. Thank you. All right. Moving on. Uh, okay. Thank you. 1024 Main Street, DP file 137-1634. And who do we have? Is Dominic with us this evening? Uh, yes, folks, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. yep. good evening. So I, I'm actually, dri I got uh, hung up on a project, so I'm actually driving home, so I'm not gonna put my video on. Okay. Uh, but, um, so we were in front of the commission uh, for the initial hearing at your last meeting. Uh, there was a number of questions and concerns brought up. So we did prepare an addendum to the notice of intent to attempt to address those questions. So hopefully folks have had a chance to 
review that, but um, I'll just kind of summarize. And one of the concerns was uh, making sure that we minimize outflow from the Concord Green Ponds to the Assabit River following a treatment. So we have a, a several points on the addendum that we will, um, treatments will not take place if a significant rain event is forecasted for 72 hours after the treatment. Uh, also would not be conducted immediately after a rain a rain event um and and at any time if when we do treatments the, the plan would be to try to to slow down the outflow or uh from the ponds um any natural outflow so the plan would be to uh, put a six inch board in the outlet of the upper ponds and a six inch board in the lower ponds uh, the middle pond does not have an outlet structure that would allow another board to be put in. So we feel that, you know, creating that six inches of storage in the lower in the lower and upper pond will help to also minimize any outflow of the uh, products that would be used if we do a treatment. Uh, and we also would not conduct the treatment within 50 feet of the outlet of the lower pond that discharges to the river. So that is our intentions to um, address minimizing the outflow to the river. Uh, there was also a number of questions about some of the practices. On oh, Dominic, you're cutting out a little bit. The property manager that there are no no fertilizers. Hey, Dom are, yes. Dominic, you, yes, you, just start, you just started fading a little bit. Okay. About, about two sentences ago, that's about. How, how about how do I sign? How about now? Am I okay? You, yeah, you're okay now. Okay. Yeah, I pulled over, so I don't know. Oh, that's <laughs> great. Sure what, Good signal at the moment. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm not sure what where you folks, um, what, where where we left off, but um, so I went over the the points that we would do yes. to minimize the flow. Yep, and the six inch six inch boards for storage capacity. Yep. Yes. Yep. Um, just uh, some notes on the general property and land management at the condominiums. Uh, the fertilizers are not applied within fifty feet of the ponds. The fertilizers product products that are, are applied do not contain any phosphorus, which is in compliance with the uh, state guidance about no phosphorus fertilizers um there is a five generally a five to 15 foot no dis, no mow no disturb around the ponds uh, for those folks who have been to the uh ponds you know that some of the buildings actually get very close to the pond's edge so in some places it's not possible to maintain a 50 foot no mow um, because it would really would abut directly come up against the buildings, but where there, there is at least five feet of no mow and where the areas, the buildings are far enough away that, to allow it that there, there would be up to a 15 foot no mow areas. Uh, the hey, hey, basin, I'm sure. sorry, Dominic. I, I was just gonna just, just hesitate for a moment on just that point, sure. you know, the five to 15, is there, It's it, it seems that there may be opportunities around the ponds to to get a little bit more room versus five to 15 feet um could you, so you possibly mean, take a closer look at that and see if we can get a little bit more room in areas where that might be possible so, so to, to have a larger nomo if there's yeah a, a lot of I, a lot of okay. yeah ideally we're trying to as best as best we can if you will you know try to work towards a 25 foot you know, standard no disturb zone. And we understand that that's not possible in certain areas that you've laid out, but perhaps you could take a, a, a closer look at that and see if we can be a little bit more robust with that in certain areas, if possible. Absolutely, we'll discuss that with the with the property manager. I, I know there's at least, there's probably one, one part of the lower pond that does have a fair amount of uh, buffer that we could probably do that. Um, okay. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. A couple more points. Uh, the, all the catch basins on the property are um, cleaned uh, annual basis. Um, 
also in terms of the the non-native vegetation purple loosestrife um other other non-native plants the, the, so the property manager actually hires an arborist uh works there for about a week or so um, every year to actually manually remove any non-native species that are seen around the pond. I know some of the some folks, some of the commissioners were asking um, if anything was being done for any of the other non-native species around the pond. So so I thought that was really excellent when I when I learned that that they were doing it with uh, an arborist and doing it manually, all the non-native species. So I thought that was a great point. Um, the last sort of topic is is storm is kind of monitoring. So as, as part of the original NOI, we had stated that the ponds would all be tested for water quality uh, twice a year, once in the beginning of the season and once at the end of the season. Uh, we would also we, we've also proposed to conduct a stormwater sampling round every year. Uh, and we would we would sample one um, kind of inflow, one stormwater inflow at each pond uh, on an annual basis, and we would rotate uh, the out the um, outfalls that would be sampled. Uh, so we would kind of on a on a revolving basis every year we would do uh, stormwater sampling round at, at different um, stormwater discharges into the ponds, and and, and I believe there's about and we put a map in the addendum. Um, I, I believe there's six or you know six, seven or eight um, stormwater um, outlets that go into the pond. So those those would be sampled. Uh, we would also uh, we would also take a, a one time uh, sediment sampling, one sample from each pond to see uh, what the nutrient content of the the sediment is in the pond and that's kind of helps us decide kind of helps us determine whether some of the high phosphorus values we've been seeing in the ponds um, could also be coming from within the ponds themselves from nutrient rich muck uh, so it kind of create more of a complete picture with the stormwater sampling and the sediment sampling to try to see um, you know where the nutrients are coming from in the ponds. So I think that will will go a long way to um, help provide a clearer picture of what's going on in the ponds. Um, so that's kind of that. That's pretty much everything that we hope hopefully addressed all the questions and concerns that were brought up at the last uh, meeting. So I'd be Thank happy you. to uh, answer any other questions you have tonight. Thank you, Dominic. Um, so just a just to circle back on the sampling, I think, and I don't know if you discussed this with staff yet or not in terms of the sampling. I know you, you mentioned annually, um, but I, I, you know, staff's got a recommendation that all the outlets that have five or more catch basins contributing to that outlet into the pond be sampled twice annually versus just okay. because that's taken up a, a, a fairly big grouping of catch basins and and kind of consolidating into one of the out, outfalls. Okay, well, I think we can, we can incorporate that into the program. Yeah, I mean, we, um, yes. Okay. And again, one thing I didn't mention is that we'll, we'll try it, we'll, uh, the samples will be collected within an hour of the start of the storm. So try to, and it's as early as possible in the storm up to an hour in the storm, just so we can try to catch uh, the first flush uh, of yes. the storm water. Okay. Um, yep. Yes, Bert. Dominic, one other thing on the stormwater monitoring, um, if you could add a, just a, a protocol for how that's going to get reported, um, that would be great. I know with the, the previous order that was out here for management of these ponds, um, that was, it was supposed to happen, but to the, to the best of my knowledge, that was inconsistent or the, the reports never, never got to us. Um, so if you could just add something about you know, the, the frequency of reporting or, or something in there that it can be put in into the plans, that would be great. Yeah, and, and, if I, and if I recall, Bert, last, the last discussion we had was, I think, Dominic, I, I think you said you had those reports and you were going to follow up and, and send them along from the previous sampling events. Is yeah, that? I, I, th I thought I did that. Is, is that, 
did I did I not do that? Is is Delia there? I, I can't. Uh, Delia Delia is not here. Um, she okay. may have got them, and I may not have seen them. So we we might have them. I have to check with her when she gets back. Um, okay, I, I did. I I thought I did send all those, but um, if you want to let me know, um, or have Delia let me know if you guys don't have them, I can resend them for sure. That'd be great. Sure. Um, I said one other thing. Yes, quickly. please. Um, just going back quick to the the no mo areas. If those could also be added onto those plans, so we can see where they'll be, I think that'd be really helpful. And that's within the the so-called five to fifteen. But yeah. perhaps adding to those areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah and just showing point. those locations on the plan would, would be helpful. And it and it can okay. be on one of the existing plans, right? So yeah, not not to create work for you, but right. just if you could. <laughs> I could, I could probably, uh, yeah, and we have a, we have a, a couple, we have several different maps in our GIS system. So we, we're, we don't have the ability to do kind of official, uh, art, like, um, plan, okay. plan, like real, real site plans, but we have a GIS system, like the map that you saw on the addendum and some of the maps in the NOI that we could, we could certainly, um, have, we have the ability to measure out oh, distances so we can, we yeah. could put, Put a uh, layer on top of it of the no mo. Yeah, that'll that'll work fine. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Um, Bill. Yeah. Do, we, uh, do uh, I should uh, maybe maybe Bert knows. Um, are are we going to be asking for um, any management plan about the types of plants or any plants that should be put in those no mo zones or? Um, uh, are we are we interested in having some sort of a of a detail of a I think it should be planted in those zones or not? Yeah, I think if there's going to be plantings in those zones, um, we should have a, a planting we, plan submitted. Where do we just to, let it go? I mean, it's just, 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 just rewild it, if you yeah, will. Rewild it. And, is it well, and is it an annual mow, if you will, or a no mow? Uh, so here we had, we were looking for a no mow. Okay, fine. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it may be, you but, know, you mentioned that there is already a, a manage, invasive species management plan that's in place. So those details aren't in the plan. So if you can add those or as an addendum, maybe it has something about planting yeah. as part of it. But if yeah. if they are already implementing an invasive species management plan that you indicated, um, you know, it'd be good to have that as part of the plan. Yeah, apply it to here. I don't. I don't believe there exists an, a written plan, and basically, the, uh, an arborist is, has been under contract to come out and um, manually remove any invasive species around the pond. That's kind of the sum of it. I mean, there's. There are other well, maybe that expert can just sort of detail what they typically do and include that in the plan or the addendum so that yeah. we can see. Hi, my name is Sonia. I'm actually the property manager of Concord Green, and we spend five thousand dollars a year to our arborist who spends multiple weeks pulling all the invasives. Everything mm -hmm. else around the ponds is what you would call wild. Um, we did do an extensive tree replacement plan a few years ago and included in that was some plants that were approved. They were native plants that were planted closer to the ponds, but there's mm -hmm. no plan right now to put any more plants around the ponds. Okay, thank you for that, Sonia. Hey, but 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 Gary brings up a good point. If there is an arborist that's just doing simple invasive removals, it, it's really maybe just a paragraph, super simple of what she does, just so we're aware that there's no foliar spraying being done or any chemicals being used that close to the water. So it, again, it can be just a very simple write-up that say, hey, I hand pull invasives that are near the pond and that's all we do. We don't use any spray or chemicals. Um, but well, I, but think, I can nice tell stuff. you that he's been there for tw over 20 years and he manually pulls them. I watch him do it. So oh, that's great. I, mean, so, I can have him write something on letterhead. So, but it's 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 that's that, that's all. Do. OK, Yeah, you can just and Dominic can just tuck it into the package and just and at least the commission will be able to just simply say, OK, that's how invasives are handled near the water bodies in the in the condominium complex. So I have another question. So does this mean that we have to have another continuance? Um, I don't, I don't think we were going to close tonight, um, based on, we wanted to hear what Dominic had come up with. It sounds like we're in, we're in pretty good shape. So I think what Dominic has to do with you, of course, is just 
you know, we, we talked about a few things just to be slight revisions or additions to it. And once he incorporates those things and, and note, notes the no mo areas on the plan, I think we'll have everything to be in good shape for the July 19th meeting. Okay, the pawns are looking pretty bad. <laughs> Very so there, good. Two, two okay. things you want the no mo on the plans, and you want a paragraph from the arborist on the practices. Is that correct? Yeah, and I think and and just and just noting some of the things that we picked up on in terms of the you know twice annual on the five five catch basin outlets or more, right? And I know Bart, you got a couple. Uh, yeah, so those revisions to the to the um, stormwater monitoring. So what Ed just spoke to with the the extra testing on those catch basins um, and the protocol for reporting um, the, the results of those testing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, I mean. It, Suggestion. Obviously, it's up to the commission. They seem pretty clear cut revisions. Uh, if would it be possible to um, proceed tonight, pending? I mean, pending those specific revisions or no? Okay. Yeah, I think you just have to get those tucked in. Okay. So we'll we'll uh, if if you get that to staff, I think we'll be in good shape for the nineteenth. And I and again, I I'm not. You you call it for it. Do you think they have to attend, or you think as long as you see the things come into your um, satisfaction? Why don't we um, figure that out when those revisions come in? So okay. Dominic, we can be in touch and we can figure that out ahead of the next meeting. Um, but okay. if everything's if everything's in place, um, probably a good chance you won't need to attend. But let's just just wait and see on that. Okay, okay. understood. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Right. Thank you, Commissioner. Good evening. Thank you. Good, night. Good evening. Thanks. All right. So I think under new applications this evening, uh, we have 36 laws for road, RDA file number 23-8. And is Melissa here? Oh, yeah, yeah, come on up. Right. If you'd like. No, 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 we got we we got you on this one, I think. What do you mean, Ted? Yeah. Yeah. So I have um I I think you have the measurements. It was eleven by twenty one. It's an old shed, um, which I want to replace with a smaller shed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I so I had looked um to have it um repaired, and it was about fourteen thousand. So then I didn't act, I didn't know I had to go through you anyhow, but I ended up going to Barnyard in Connecticut and um, it was half the price. So I ordered it and then um, heard discussion that I assured that you don't need a permit. So I came here about a month ago. Well, thank you for coming. Yeah, appreciate that. Uh, after, <laughs> yes, I want to leave. <laughs> well, there's a similar. Yeah, yeah. Well, and certainly I think this is fairly straightforward because it is in essence a replacement in kind. So I don't I don't have any particular issues. I don't think staff does. No, 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 no. As long as you're not getting closer to the wetland than what was there and yep. not then small, small yeah. Small. Right. So that Nick, are you good? You're on mute, Nick. Sorry. Yes, it looks great. It's fine. Okay. Great. Are there any public comment regarding this application? Don't see any. All right, hearing none. I think we have a recommendation, Bill. If you want sure, to take that, I'm happy to. I recommend that we issue a negative determination, which is good news, right? <laughs> <laughs> and that's on the RDA uh, number twenty-three dash eight at thirty-six Lawsbrook Road. Uh, negative determination number three with the following conditions: Number one, erosion controls or shall be install installed prior to construction. A pre-construction conference will be held with the DNR staff prior to comm commencement of work. And three, that after the project has been completed, the applicant shall submit a letter to the NRC stating that all work has been conducted in accordance with all the conditions of this determination of applicability, and any change from the uh, RDA shall be described. That's it. Second. All right. I'll take the vote. Bill? Aye. Gary? Aye. Nick? Aye. And I am an aye as well. So, so what does that mean? That means, that means, means you're ready. That, you so can do it, it, yeah. yeah but, but, but I'm ready Karen, to take it down. Karen's going to send you a letter of approval. And what has to be done? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then yeah. I'll have to call you and go through you again, or? 
You will have a pre-construction yeah. conference. Yeah, so yeah. once once you receive that, um, the okay. negative determination, which is your permit, um, you can be in touch with either Delia or myself, and we'll get that pre-construction site meeting scheduled to sort of review the, the permit then, and then you're then you're good to go. Yeah, yeah. They're, yeah. It's, they're holding the shed. So yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it should move along for you it's now. It's pretty simple. Yeah. You yeah. want to make sure that there's some straw models in place. Yeah. Friday morning. Yeah. Good luck with the project. Yeah, Sounds yeah. like you're in good shape. Yeah. Thank you. All right. The next uh, new application to be heard this evening is 311 Garfield Road, RDA number 23-9. Um, Thank you, someone. Who do we have with us this evening for 311 Garfield Road? Rich. Good evening. Uh, Rich Kirby, LEC Environmental. How are you? Hi, Rich. How are you? Good. Good. Thanks. So with me tonight is um, also from LEC wetland scientist, Nicole Ferrara, and we have landscape architect, Tim Lee, and project uh, architect, Anthony Frausto. So we filed this RDA as part of uh, some initial investigative work that we're gonna be um, conducting in order to determine the extent and scope of a notice of intent that will be forthcoming. And this RDA has to do with the um, partial demolition of a old pump house that's uh, associated with a single family residence at 311 Garfield Road. So 311 Garfield Road is a 1.84 acre parcel in the southern portion of town. It's southwest of the Sudbury River, southeast of the Valley Road and north of Lawrence Drive. So we have a single family house. Um, if I could share my screen, in fact, I, that would probably sure. be great. Um, we have a single family house within, uh, just generally in the outside of the hundred foot buffer zone, and then, uh, some lawn and landscaped areas that descend toward a scrub shrub, scrub shrub wetland. So, um, I'm showing the host is still disabled sharing. I don't know if that, if I could, Yeah, I don't know if uh, maybe the host has the RDA. Yeah, I, I do. I don't know. I just um, I can pull it up. Okay. There you go. That's the no, that's, that's, that's that's awesome. awesome. Move yeah. it over. Yeah. There right. we go. That's the plan. Maybe, maybe zoom in just a little bit. Yep. Uh, thank you. So in this view, this is a partial view of the property. And toward the toward the right hand view, plan view right, you can see um, the portion of the single family house. It's actually just like a patio area off the house, just within the outer part of the uh, 100 foot buffer zone. Uh, the land descends down toward a, uh, a, a block style retaining wall, and then there's more lawn area. And then we have the scrub shrub swamp delineated with uh, the wetland flags uh, F1 through F11 shown on here. There are additional flags that uh, extend further to the south and, um, and east, but they're not really shown on this plan. So you can see the pump house uh, just within the northwestern corner of this plan view here. Uh, the goal is, is to turn this pump house into a studio. And right now there's some old pump house equipment inside and they need to partially demolish the structure and fully demolish the equipment inside to see what they're dealing with in terms of rehabilitation. In order to get access to the pump house, we're proposing a 10 foot wide access roadway just outside the 25 foot buffer zone. And that access roadway will occur over existing lawn. It will be comprised of roughly a foot of um, compacted wood chips over geotech fabric. And the first section of the entryway toward the bottom of the screen will have some swamp mats there just to uh, provide a little bit more stabilization with the with the grade change off of the uh, off of the driveway. Uh, let's see. Um, in order to access the um, in order to install this access roadway, yes, a good portion of it will be through lawn, but there is a section of lawn that has gone fallow over the years, and there are a handful of sapling eastern white pines, a stump, and several stones that will need to be removed. Uh, we did revise the plan to add tree protection, as you can see here with the red circles toward the bend in the roadway, uh, to protect some larger pine trees that, are, that, are, that exist there. So that is really the scope of work. We do ask for a, a waiver request for work within the 25 foot buffer zone. You can see the bottom left corner, roughly 30 square feet of that pump house is within the 30 foot buffer zone. Our erosion controls do go around that. 
Uh, there's really no plan to alter the land around that area at this point. It's really just, you know, like I said, partial demolition of the pump house, full demolition of the uh, old equipment that's inside, and then uh, figuring out what we need to do to convert this structure into a studio. And then uh, we'll be back with the notice of intent for that portion of it. Um, the notice of intent will also include some native plantings, uh, some grading, um, and some invasive species management within the scrub shrub wetland, which currently has a fair amount of porcelain berry. So stay tuned for all that, but that's uh, what we're here tonight for is really just the access roadway and the partial demolition of the pump house. Okay, thank you, Rich. Appreciate the uh, overview. Um, questions? Yeah, I, I have a question. I mean, so say you convert this to a studio, then what is the fate of, and maybe this has to wait until you actually have a proposal for the, the studio, but I mean, what is the fate of the scrub shrub wetland around the proposed studio afterward? Like, will you sure. make some kind of a path to access this studio? Well, I think what we what we may consider, and that's a great question, and I think that, you know, I don't think this is to be determined. Ideally, we will reconstruct the structure in the same footprint on the same foundation. So we're not doing a whole lot of um, extra earthwork in and around this structure. But just to the south of this structure, you can see that rectangular stone wall area. That looks like an older foundation, maybe that supported a, a, an auxiliary structure or a structure adjacent to this one. That will all remain. Um, you know, it's a scrub shrub swamp to the extent you have the porcelain berry in there. Really, that's the uh, the, the main woody plant that's, that's in the scrub shrub swamp. Absent the porcelain berry, it's more of a meadow dominated by uh, goldenrods and a uh, sensitive fern, probably some bone set in there at this point, that, you know, in the spring. Um, so we, our, our intent would just be to sort of leave that, leave that be. We're talking about and contemplating an annual mowing schedule to keep that porcelain berry out and other woody invasives. So the intent would be to keep it a, a wild area. Uh, on the north side, of the um, of the pump house is where the there's a, an existing septic leaching field, and we're looking to convert that area to a more usable lawn. And the idea being the kids can play in the lawn area on the north side of the pump house in that retaining wall that you see there, while you are while the, while you're in the studio. So, I know that's a long answer to your simple question. <laughs> yeah, no, no. yeah, Nick, please. No. So, um, so after this work is done, the demolition, what's going to happen to the road? Is that going to be left there with compact? So, I think what we'll end up doing is we'll we'll end up removing the wood chips. But the the other part of the story on this project is that there is an um, an access easement for electrical lines by I believe it's National Grid. Um, it might be EverSource. Forgive me if I got that wrong. But they need to maintain a, a, a uh, at least a, um, you know a lawn type roadway, something that's drivable, um, in order to gain access to those utility poles and electrical infrastructure. Are they shown on the map? I don't see them. Say it again. Sorry. Are they shown on the map? I didn't notice them. Uh, there is a utility pole. If you look at the largest of the trees to be protected, you can see the UP utility uh, pole, and there are there are a number of utility poles throughout the now, site. Now I can see the the utility. Yeah, and and the notice of intent too actually will include um, burying some of those overhead wires and putting trenching them underground, uh, and we're doing our best to make sure we're outside of the twenty five foot buffer zone with uh, with that effort. Okay, I guess so. My main uh, question, um, since this is possible, you know, ultimately looks like it's going to be a, a two-stage project. You know, you're applying for a permit to do this, and then you'd probably still need this road there to do any construction that's going to happen later. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly how we handle this because wouldn't we normally expect to have some sort of restoration of the area so that it's not just wood chips, or are we okay with leaving this project to have wood chips on the ground and then we're going to issue a I guess we don't have to issue anything because it's not an, an OI so I'm, I'm just unclear about that yeah so. if I could um Nick the 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 wood chips are intended to be temporary for the duration of the project 
right? So if if it turns out, let's say, for example, the contractor gets in there, puts the wood chip roadway in. Again, there's geotechnical fabric beneath the wood chips, so it'd be relatively straightforward to remove and restore. Uh, and they go in and they determine that the that the uh, for whatever reason the pump house is not convertible to a studio space, and they're just going to leave it the way it is. Um, you know, at that time, the wood chips would be removed, and the the lawn area that's beneath it would be would be restored. Okay, so um, it to be documented. Is my question. Say it, Bert. Bert, say it again. I'm asking Bert if we need that to be documented. Oh, as okay. As application. Um, we could add a condition to the determination that says the wood chips are to be removed at the completion of the project, um, and then that can that could easily be rolled into you know whatever is issued with the notice of intent when that comes. So um, you could avoid the removal if they put in the notice of intent. Uh, they could, uh, yeah, right? Because they can do work they don't have to do. So, right. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's all. Thank you. And Nick, would you do you want to note that in? In the uh, in the staff mm -hmm. recommendation as an item number three on the wood chip road, do I? Yeah, that, yeah, I think that would be appropriate. Yeah, to yeah. something to the effect that if if work doesn't occur in the near future, that wood chips would be removed. But if an NOI follows and the work's going to follow, kind of in sequence, then that 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 road could stay in place. Is that the general idea? What you're driving at? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And Rich, does that go for the the swamp mats as well? Uh, I think I don't know the answer. If that's up to okay. the contractor, so wh why don't we okay. presume the worst case scenario that the swamp mats would indeed remain? Okay. Yeah, you know, I just wanted some clarification. Yeah, that was a good and question. Swamp mats. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, any further well, questions? I, I, I'm still caught, Rich. I, I just didn't catch this. Uh, you say uh, either Eversource or someone needs a, a, a easement or something, or has an easement through there. Um, That's my understanding. Yes, and they they need to be able to have um, a way to drive their equipment to access the electrical infrastructure that's on the lot. But they haven't had it before this, and there's the lines going right through there, right? <laughs> Correct. Well, they, I believe they they have had it. Uh, Tim, are you, do you want to talk with this? Because I think you're a little bit more versed, uh, or Anthony, than I am on this particular subject. Yeah, uh, this is Anthony Frosty here. I'll chime in here a little bit. Um, my and understanding... And, and, from, and Anthony, you are with... What, I, I'm what? with Morehouse McDonald and Associates Architects, and we've, Thank been, you. we've been on site with a power company um, several times now with a contractor, and uh, and Tim and th these poles have been there for a very long time. They have accessed them multiple times, sometimes for uh, recovery after storm damage. Um, and they're uh, what we're trying to do is um, so going back to the question of easement. It's actually not technically they don't have an easement on the property for the power poles. They just have been there and they have used this access path that's existing as their way to get back there to, to work on the poles when there's been issues with the wires and the poles. Um, so it's been an interesting kind of development to like realize that the town's power poles are all over of uh, this piece of property without an easement. And the owner of the project actually has tried to, um, to investigate multiple ways in which we could essentially reconfigure the electrical lines to take some of the poles off the property. Unfortunately, they need to go somewhere else. The lines need to go somewhere else. The poles need to go somewhere else. And that is a big, pro that's a big project in itself, which requires a lot of other, uh, and a lot of other neighbors. And there has been, um, you know, there's been a discussion. Let's just put it that way. Uh, but at this point, what we're trying to do is simply provide access a temporary access on a road on a on an access path that's already there and existent there and has been there for a long time um it consists of um meadow grass that was kind of somewhat maintained by the previous owners i think they mowed it uh currently is kind of um a little bit grown over uh not very well um kept and what we'll do to the property is we'll restore a lot of the conditions on the ground to um and to enhance the the, the, all the mitigation that's going on around the wetlands as well as um, 
give the, the town the access they need to maintain those poles. Okay. All okay. right. Thank you. And so, and just to clarify, so so what you're saying, Anthony, is that the 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 drive that this temp drive that's laid out for construction purposes and demolition purposes that's kind of functioned as a, a, a rough access path in the past as well for the Eversource or N grid or whatever. Exactly, except they didn't okay. come and put wood chips down and protect the the path. They just came and used it. As far as yeah. our well, that sounds like a utility. And just for <laughs> clarification, is this a uh, Concord Municipal Light Plant or is it Eversource or Natural? It, it's, it's actually Concord. Okay. Yeah. Well, that yeah. makes more sense. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for clearing that up, Anthony. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Very helpful. Um, any, you guys, Bill, I'm, I'm okay. Gary, you good? Nick? Yeah. All right. Any public yeah. comment regarding this application? I don't see any. So I think with that, we have a recommendation and adding number three to Nick's point would be would be helpful. Uh, yes. Gary, you want to take that? Well, I am happy to take that, but I hope that I have you get the, the wording for three oh. right. So okay. um, I <laughs> move that we issue a negative determination number three with the following conditions. One, a pre-construction conference will be held with DNR staff prior to commencement of work. Two, after the project has been completed, applicants should submit a letter to the NRC stating that all work has been conducted in accordance with all conditions of this determination of applicability. Three, the wood chip road is to be removed at the completion of the project unless a follow-up NOI. I think the idea was that if an NFI was submitted shortly, you know, within a short period of time if we want to define that period of time or, or shortly after the demolition work part how do you want to think about that yeah so unless, or we could ask it, rich if it, timing on an, an yeah i mean you know our intention is to submit the notice of intent for the um for there was a deadline today that we weren't able to make but the following deadline is our intent but it would be nice to maybe have a little bit of breathing room and say in yeah. case something sure. comes up with the pump house and it requires a little bit more thought or design, uh, maybe six months, uh, if that would be. So unless a follow-up NOI for reconstruction of the pump house within six months addresses the final disposition of the access road. Comfortable with that? That would and be great. Any changes from the RDA shall be described. We have a second? No, I second. Thank you, Bill. And the vote, Bill? Aye. Gary? Aye. Nick? Aye. And I am an I as well. Thank you, Rich. All right. Good luck. Thank you very good luck, much. Team. Good to see yeah. you all, and we'll hopefully see you soon. Very all good. Right. Thank you. All right. Well, I think we're passing over this. And this is my old notes to Cargill. All right. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So the next one is a notice of intent for 76 Bruce Road, DEP file 137-1646. Um, Good evening, Rich. Hi, good evening. Richard Harrington from Harrington Associates and Dave Fisher from Fisher Design Group is here as a landscape architect. And we're representing uh, Mike Bushnell from Bushnell Construction. Um, do you want to share the screen or do you want to? Um, I'm having some trouble getting that up, so I can. Okay. I can, um, I can put this on the screen for you, though. Terrific. Whichever plan you'd like me to put up. The... Uh, you can start with the septic and then. So my role was, was to, uh, the existing system was a failed septic system in the backyard, which is in the buffer zone. So the home will be removed and we soil tested in the front yard. We were able to move the septic system outside the 100 foot buffer zone. So our property is located at the end of Bruce Road on the cul-de-sac. And when you're looking at this, at the plan in the bottom right is the edge of wetlands just off the property, flags one, two, and three. And then we have a 25 foot buffer zone line where we have the hay bales along that, a 50 foot no build. And then the proposed house is just over 60 feet to 69 feet off the edge of the flag number two. A portion of the house is in the buffer zone and a portion of the front driveway in front of the garage is also, uh, we're providing a roof drywell underneath the driveway outside the buffer zone. So all the roof leaders that are in the buffer zone will be sent around to the front and recharged outside the buffer zone as additional mitigation. Uh, there are 
we show a stockpile area in the left hand side outside the 100 foot buffer zone. So what we're doing to improve it from an engineering point of view is the septic system is going to be removed from the buffer zone and we're going to provide recharge of the roof runoff outside the buffer zone and then the plantings will be mitigation provided by Dave Fisher. Uh, there's that, if you could go to the site plans for the landscape architect. So this is the plan that Dave Fisher submitted. Uh, we shaded the proposed house footprint and the driveway footprint and, and provided this to the landscape architect. And I'll allow Dave to, to talk about this. Uh, we did receive some, one more item. We did receive some communication from Bert uh, about the mitigation and uh, the correspondence was that we might be shy 213 square feet of, of, of plantings, which is equivalent to nine shrubs. So we have a revised plan that shows nine shrubs um, being added to, to meet that goal, um, as opposed to counting the roof drywall area outside the buffer zone. So uh, Dave, if you want to talk about this, you can go ahead. Hey, Rich, so Rich, Rich, one question, we just want to get the numbers right. Go yeah. ahead, Bert. So, um, and I spoke with Ed about this yesterday. There's a typo on the, on the thumbnail yeah. here I should have um, brought up earlier. So that 1,100, and 46 should be 1446. Oh, okay. So, so there's the delta. Yep. Right. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> tough math. Yeah. And, and, and Bert, have you had a chance to look at that plan as well for the night um, and stuff? Rich, is that what you just emailed me? It is. And uh, in, it just, the client yeah, was. I, I, haven't had a chance, I haven't had a chance to look at it yet, but I think that the adding the shrubs, I think it's fairly straightforward in yeah. terms of mitigation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we're. Hitting the 1659 though with those shrubs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Um and and did you guys file a I think you're gonna be in the 25 doing some of the work, aren't you? Yes. So did you did you file a waiver on that for that work in the 25? Uh, no, we need to file that. Okay, that'd be great. If you could just follow up with that, that would be appreciated. Right. We can get that in tomorrow. And and also, I think there's a, just a, a note here that there's some old fence sections within the 25 foot no disturb zone. If those could be removed from the 25. Uh, yes, we added a note on that on that plan revision ah. dated today. Of uh, this this site plan was updated to include that note also. It, Very we good. We think it's off the property, but we'll we'll check it and remove anything in that area. Okay. Yeah. Your property, of course. So don't don't want to go into neighbors. <laughs> um, any further comments from the commissioner? No. Nick, you good? Okay. Uh, any public comment on this? I don't see any. So so I think uh, with that, I think we will continue out until the nineteenth. But I don't think, based on what we're seeing, that Rich, I don't. I'm not sure you have to show up for that. You can talk to Bert about it, but I think we should be in good shape. Fantastic. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Good Thanks. luck with the project. All right, moving right along. Um, 166 Commonwealth Ave, Concord LLC, and NOI filing number 137-643. Uh, John? Yes, good evening. John Rockwood from EchoTech. Uh, we have the project team here with us as well. Um, the owner, Joe Soberg, the applicant, Anthony G Gagliardi, um, the engineer, Oliver Guzman, arborist, Jen Cattell, and Sir Cosmo, the landscape architect here. Um, Steve is here as well. Um, and, and John, excuse me, just, just, just as a quick preface to this, I, I know you guys are scheduled for the planning board in the near future, is that correct? Um, you'd have to talk to Anthony about that. I'm okay. not familiar with what's going on with other permitting agencies. Yeah, I, I think the point, the only point here is that, you know, the, the I think the planning board probably has the bulk of the issues on this one. And so certainly we, we'd like a maybe a broad overview this evening. Um, but I think we want to, we'll, we'll probably hold any you know, final discussion, if you will, until you get through the planning board in case they had some changes and that affects some other considerations and and so on. So appreciate, would like to have an overview, but again, maybe it's best to be kind of circle back around as well once you get through the planning board. 
just in case there are some other changes that they'd like to see. Okay. That makes I sense. I, yep. uh, I understand that. You. Okay. Thank you. You want me to share my screen or? Yeah, let me um, make you a co host and that should. So you should be able to share now. That looks good. Okay, um, that's the existing conditions plan. Um, and basically what we have is, I'll uh, go through the resources first. We have, I, I believe it's Neshoba Brook to the north end of the site. Mm -hmm. the, the bank and menial high water line is essentially the interface of the retaining wall that confines the brook. The purple line is the extent of the 100 year floodplain. There's no bordering vegetated wetlands on the site. So basically we have bank and then we have the 25, 50 and 100 foot buffer zones to the bank. And the 100 foot line is also the um, 100 foot riverfront and the 200 riverfront area goes to here. There is a portion of the stream coming out of the pond across the site, but that doesn't reflect riverfront area or buffer zone onto the site, but we flagged and showed that anyways for completeness. The existing property is essentially almost 100% paved down to uh, the retaining wall. There's a small area of earth with a few trees right along the retaining wall. Um, other than that, it's pavement, an existing uh, gas station, pumps, canopy with uh, dispensers, and again, just a significant area of pavement. Under existing conditions, essentially stormwater sheet flows across the site and either infiltrates in the thin strip or goes over the wall into the river. What's proposed yeah. is essentially a complete redevelopment of the site. The uh, existing gas station pumps and all the uh, amenities associated with the gasoline station would be removed. There was a protocol provided for that work within the notice of intent by a company that does tank removals. The necessary permits would be obtained for that. There'd be um, testing during excavation and samples would go out for testing and there'd be a tank closure report that goes to all the appropriate parties. Um, and after that, the uh, balance of the uh, property would be redeveloped with a mixed use residential building with associated parking, um, a large stormwater infiltration system to address roof runoff plus the uh, parking lot runoff. And as part of the project, we had proposed to connect a um, bike path, walking path to an existing walking path located um, about where my cursor is bouncing around up there. So it would provide access across this property to an existing path on the property to the east. Um, and as part of this project, um, we're proposing a, a landscape plan that it, uh, provides 22 saplings, 111 shrubs, and 209 herbs and forbs as shown on this plan. And as part of this project, there, there's uh, seven trees in the northern part of the property. Two are Norway maples that are not in particularly good shape. We have some uh, northern catalpa, which is sort of a weed species, which are leaning and are not in particularly good shape. And there's one American elm down against the river that would be retained. And there's a dead tree that would actually top as a 15 foot high snag. So it's safe, but still provides wildlife habitat value as the snag. Um, that's pretty much a summary, a brief overview of the entire project. Yeah. And um, that's sort of what you were looking for tonight. And if you have any questions, we can, uh, try to respond to those. We have pretty much everyone from the project team here. So if there's engineering, arborist, landscape questions, questions for the applicant or owner, we can uh, deal with that. Do you want me to stop sharing the screen or you want me to keep the plans uh, up? I, keep that, I think it's helpful to have the, the images up. Thank you, John. Okay. Yeah, I have one question. What's the nature of the uh, pavement of the walking path? It, it's per currently proposed to be a bituminous pavement. That's, the, what the, that's what the path is on the on the adjacent property. They yeah. were just proposing to match that. 
Any, any thoughts of making that a permeable paper so you could get some kind of drainage through that or? I, I can't imagine that would be a problem, but there is lawn and other plantings adjacent to it. So it would run off to the side and be infiltrated either to the side or if it's permeable pavers, it would go through. Yeah. So I don't but, see, I don't see that that's a particular problem. Okay. And, and is the site, just a question, is the site um, along the brook, is it still, is the site still sloping towards the brook? So the, the runoff is either going to be collected in that limited landscaping area before it flows over into the brook or is there is is there a, a different kind of sloping there that certainly would slow down that runoff to the brook yeah well our problem here is that's that's in the 100 year floodplain so we can't really can't grade in that area but the uh, good news is the entire building roof and all of the pavement goes to a stormwater system in the southern end of the site so there's yeah. only a small portion of the site that has the that's potential to with. still flow towards the brook mm -hmm. so that's how we sort of address that because you know, we're providing a little bit of extra flood storage on the site, about 115 cubic feet. We're doing a little bit of filling in the floodplain. We tried to think of everything as part of this project. Yeah. We've uh, submitted a waiver request for the work proposed within the 25 feet. And again, yeah. presently, the entire site is essentially pavement or building. Yeah, yeah, no, we have, we, nice. we yeah. certainly appreciate that. And and I think it, it's a good point that the, the, the majority of the roof will go to the the Caltech chamber system or something to that effect. Um, so you're only dealing with almost that immediate impact adjacent to the brook. And so maybe those permeable pavers almost solve the issue in terms of just having infiltration. Yeah. Um, thank you for that consideration. Uh, a separate question, just the distances from the, the river, uh, existing conditions versus the new building. Are we improving on that? distance I, I i don't know how close the existing building is to the you know, that was that was in the narrative i can find the numbers you know the the thing is we have existing pavement two feet away from the river yeah not talking about the pavement just want to yeah. know the whether the structures they the structure, are the structure no is, closer closer than, is closer yeah it is definitely yes it is and, and Bert, how is that handled on a on a developed site like this in terms of setback considerations? So it's, I mean, it's degraded riverfront area. Yes. The entire site's impervious. So, yeah. um, and I think we had a discussion about this, Delia and I, that the, the the building could move closer because it's moving over an already you know, completely developed impervious area. So. Um, I think that was Delia's okay. opinion on that. Yeah. We spoke about it. This was a while back. Okay. I'm just wondering yeah. how it interfaces with our policy sure. of, you know, inside the 50. Yeah. 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 No, it's it's a reasonable question. Given earlier tonight. Yeah. We just told someone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> although I think I think on a fully but kind of paved. developed paved site, I think the rule the rules are a little bit different. But again, I'll yeah. leave that for you and Delia to yeah, just want to make sure we're being consistent. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I, I I feel that we would be because again, though the entire site is impervious. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so we'll 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 swing back on that. But it, yeah. like, again, uh, you guys have already looked at it. So mm -hmm. all right. Um, and again, the planning board is really center you know front and center on this one for the most yeah, part so sure, sure. yeah so i yeah definitely want to wait and see yeah what planning says yeah john i think uh bill you good for now no, overview yeah. nick yeah. you okay at the moment all right uh any any public comment on this application all right john would you mind taking down the screen share just so i can see the people in the meeting a little easier yeah oh, thanks OK, not seeing any, not seeing any. OK, John, so if, if you're if you're good, continuing to the 19th, if you've had your planning board, if, if your teams had the planning board meeting before then, obviously it would be continued further out if the planning board doesn't happen before the 19th. Um, but again, you can you can stay in contact with staff and let them know how your timing is coming along. OK, perhaps Anthony knows the date of the planning yeah, board hearing. Hi. I don't know if you can hear me or not, but yes. Yeah. Yep. Oh, hi. Uh, my name is Anthony Gagliardi, one of the, the developers of the project with different partners. But the meeting is on um, July 25th on Tuesday. So, oh, so we should continue on the August. Karen, do you have that date? 
Oh, okay, the August. The, 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 I, I, can, I can look. Okay. 19th yeah, would be yeah. the. We just the, found that out today. August, just... August 9th. August, August 9th. 9th. So if, if that's acceptable to you at the moment, we'll, we'll pencil you in for August 9th. And if things change, just let staff know. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. okay. We appreciate the overview. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good evening. Good evening. Is for August 9th, materials would need to be submitted July 28th. Is that right? Is it the Friday before or a week? And... Be the, 20, the 21st, I believe. Oh, two? Yeah, so it would be hard for them to get here, too, depending on what happens. Oh, wait, um, Are there sorry. any other materials oh, you would have to submit? I think we provided so quite a bit. So, yeah, it would be they'll the 28th. Have, yeah, they'll yeah. have three days after the planning board meeting to submit yep. everything. Yeah, yep, you're right. Yep. Okay. It's August 9th. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Good evening. All right. Uh, notice of intent next up for the for Mass uh, Department of Conservation and Recreation, 90B Walden Street, DEP file 137 1644. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Great. Um, my name is Carl Nielsen. I'm with TRC. I'm a certified lake manager and have been working on this project for five years with DCR. <laughs> DCR is here. Jim Straub uh, has joined. Um, Hi, how is everyone doing? Good evening, Jim. Um, so th uh, this project is essentially an improvement of the existing facility. The goal of the project was to improve stormwater conditions on the site. Um, if you've done a site walk there, you you will know that the uh, erosion is pretty pretty strong, and the goal here is to stop the uh, nutrients and sediment going into Walden Pond. A secondary goal here is to upgrade the boat launch and parking area while we're doing that work. Um, the goal of that is to make it ADA compliant so that uh, the facility is meeting the standards that's, that the state wants to meet. And uh, likewise, the, the, the infrastructure or the stormwater infrastructure is also um, designed to be green infrastructure, uh, which is another standard that the state's trying to put in across their various parks and resources that they manage. So um, that's it in a nutshell. Um, a small piece of it's in Concord, uh, mostly the ramp. Yeah. The remainder of it is in Lincoln, and we just finished that hearing um, a few minutes ago. <laughs> oh, so I'm glad, I'm glad you guys are running late. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you for the overview. Um, yeah. Let's see. What One question uh, I think we had was in regard to the uh, precast planks that you're putting at as part of the kind of the landing area into the water. Mm -hmm. I think they were scheduled at 42 feet in length. Is that is that yes. correct? I mean, uh, the whole ramp, I believe. Yeah, I don't and, think each plank is 42 feet in length. No, they're 12 feet, I believe. Yes. So, 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 how far are you going into the water with the precast? Because obviously, you've got to get into the water for you mm -hmm. know small boat landings and stuff. It's essentially the same footprint that the current ramp has, um, the landing area. It's just right now it's it's natural and it as a result yeah. it gets rutted out and muddy and it, it's a little harder for um access and consistent access. So that's yeah. that's the goal is just to put some solid substrate there that the the tires of a or a trailer can back down on. Yeah, so, the, so my only question it's was on there, the plans, I'd say like that 42 foot number sounds close to the number that but it extends out. So so it so sums on the, if you will, the, the land side of the upland side, right? Then you've got the water, then you've got some of the planks going into the water. My it's, question was just how much how much linear footage is in the water? That's all. That's yeah, it's the, it's shown on page 66 of our NOI. Yeah. Um, I don't have that up. Um, yeah, yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the one. The I don't know if you're familiar with the water. Uh, Looks water like 20 feet. 
at Walden. Like 20 feet, okay. It looks uh, like 20 feet. Um, and, and this is one of the reasons that uh, Carl and I, myself, aren't, this is a pre uh, designed, like they use the Office of Fishing and Boating Access uses this all over the state. So this is like a tried and true uh, method of ramp. You know, it's not something that Carl or even We didn't myself, design it. Yeah. yeah, so we we copied and pasted <laughs> that design from uh, and integrated it needed for this site. Yeah. Um, but but the actual materials, construction, yeah. grading, uh, subsurface material, all of that is done by Fish and Wildlife. And yeah, so oh, no, it, I appreciate that. I so I, I get a better sense of it now, just looking yeah. a little bit more yeah. closely. I, I just didn't want to just trying to understand that you're going approximately 20 feet into the water which makes sense i guess from trailer and wheels yep. as you yeah and, and we're trying not to encourage you know as everyone here knows that it is only um small boats you know yeah. uh, electric yeah. motors um we are not encouraging you know a, a 50 foot ramp out into the water that's that was the that was my question no. and i appreciate your 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 kind of clarifying that thank you yeah yeah but the, the con the concrete will the concrete forms will go up a little bit though so to to kind of stop the rutting like Carl said of the tires right at the water line and as many of you know and here's the other thing too and and this is the, the wonderful thing about Walden is we have great water this year uh, five years ago uh, that water was down four feet or five feet mm. where uh, yeah you know where that ramp would have that ramp would be high and dry right now and. So, you know, we had to take that into consideration also is try to get the fluctuating water levels uh, and, and preventing cars from really, you know, entering the lake, which is yeah. what no, we don't Fair consideration. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I'm curious, just curious. I, you know, I've, I've fished over there and I've, I've kayaked over there, boated. I, I don't, do you see a lot of, uh, of, of, I just don't. You made very well. A lot of boats are uh, cars with ramps, putting boats in from ramps. Most of them are overhead or seeming to me to, me to be overhead uh, on a car top. I'm just curious. Oh, yeah. Um, so we have a huge uh, trout fishing uh, yep, yep. contingent. And the, many of those gentlemen and ladies are uh, they do have boat uh, on trailers, uh -huh. uh, but they come as when the gate opens. So we actually have our boat ramp monitor get there at 5 a.m. Oh, uh, yeah. The electric that ramp makes sense. opens. Yeah. That makes and, sense. and then by by the, by 8 o'clock, when the sun gets high and the trout go deep, those guys yeah. are gone. They leave. <laughs> sure. Um, so, so they have uh, a trolling motor and some downriggers and things like that. Whereas mm. bass fishermen, as you know, I mean, yep. they can fish from kayaks and canoes, they're right, they do carry in. Um, the other great thing, which Carl mentioned, is that we, the state, are mandated now to have uh, update all of our parks with ADA access, and this uh, ramp will definitely help us with that. Mm. We have some events down there at the ramp uh that uh ada events that come down and this ramp is now it's a stabilized ramp where you can get people in and out of the water securely safely um without worrying about uh equipment getting stuck in the water so it kind yeah, of the, it helps us that way also the other feature that this ramp has with the porous pavement is two designated trailer ada compliant trailer parking spots um oh. which Previously, there were, I mean, people parked trailers down there, but it was not as predictable and access was not guaranteed. Um, so yeah. this is really designated locations because it's paved, you'll be able to mark the spots. And um, even if there's not a monitor on site at the on the day that people are parking, there's clear markings of where, where they should and shouldn't park. Um, so yeah. Yeah. that's going to encourage the use of the site um by people that may not have used uh trailers in the past that because of access issues now they will have that access so it's a, it's a nice improvement yeah and, and and again this is all pervious pavement that you're installing so that's that's great as well um yep. okay <clears throat> um and and i do note that you've also added the floating siltation barrier as well yes thank yep. you okay 
So I think uh, Gary, Bill, Nick, you good with I'm good. questions, yeah. comments? All right. Any public comment regarding this work at Walden? All right. Not seeing any. Not seeing any. I, I think the I think the uh, staff will coordinate between Lincoln and Concord. Meeting just okay. finished up. Make sure we're all coordinated. And I think with that, you could be in touch with the staff to see if you'd need to be here on the 19th or not. Okay. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you, thank you, thank you everyone. Bye -bye. Good evening. Bye. Bye. Hey, all right. Uh, Bert, COC. Uh, yep. So we have a uh, civic compliance for, sorry, I stepped away from it. Yeah. Um, the Holy Family Parish at 79 Monument Square, DEP file number 1371456. Um, Delia looked at this, so if it's on the agenda, she looked at it. Good to go. Good to go. All right. We're going to have a motion, Gary. I move that we uh, close and issue a certificate of compliance for Holy Family Parish, uh, 790 Monument Square, DEP file 1371456. Aye. Second it. All right, Bill. Aye. Gary. Aye. Nick? Aye. And I am an I as well. All right. So that brings us to the Warners Pond Dam Removal Preliminary Design Scope of Work Review. Uh, good write up. I uh, thought it was fairly thorough. I just had a, a, a few minor comments. Um, do you guys want to start with any comment? Okay. Um, a couple of things just to keep in mind that I heard from a couple of meetings, if you will, that just public meetings, uh, you know, one was just keeping our eye on the Bill Ricca dam removal, mm -hmm. making sure that this wouldn't be nearly successful if that doesn't yes. proceed in a, in a timely manner. Um, and then I think on uh, the other thing that we heard quite a bit about, which was under task five, which I, I was glad to see, which, you know, again, there was a lot of uh, commentary on looking at, uh, you know, recreational opportunities as that pond, if if the dam removal goes forward and the pond does shrink, if you will, to the river and some of the deep holes there near Jero, I think there was a lot of, uh, you know, interest in looking at other ways of, you know, act, you know, bring activity and recreation opportunities there. So that was good. Um, I think the on task five as well this is on page 16. Um, and I think this is the third paragraph where it says additionally, um, first community, if a larger pool could be retained and expanded via dredging. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was also, if I wasn't mistaken, coupled with, can we do that and divert the river behind Scout Pond? I think that was, I think it was one and the same in terms of, can you create this kind of bigger A side channel pond? Side channel. And again, if if that could, obviously, I think that has to go hand in hand with that evaluation. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the only other thing I I had, well, a couple things on task six. I think I think what's really helpful is always renderings of of you know what what as they look at these modelings and the sediment and get a better sense of what that wetland what type of wetland that may be those renderings will be very important for certainly the abutters um, and the, and the committees it's got to kind of travel through in terms of approvals um, and then. And, and then lastly, um, and I think it may go to cost estimate, task six. I think it's really important, uh, given whoever consultant is chosen for this work, that they opine on the grant potential for the dam removal, kind of give a low to high, so that if they feel the grant's a very good potential, then that's going to start to create that, that bucket of funds for further recreational opportunities. And, I, and again, I, they all go hand in hand, but I think that would be important to understand because that's been highlighted for the for dam removal. So that was just some commentary. Yeah, I've got three main comments and I can forward this to you to <clears throat> for you and Delia to look at. But the first is just noting that, you know, I, in the introduction, you know, that the the division is seeking to advance the dam removal alternative and there is an and and address public feedback mm -hmm. so with that is the context that addressing public feedback is an important goal of this yeah. scope of work 
I've got, uh, you know, these three comments. One is, um, I guess it's task three. Uh, you know, uh, the last sentence of task three is to approximate the volume of sediment that may be mobilized by dam removal. Um, I think it might be also um, useful to have the consultant identify alternatives for sed sediment disposition. Uh, well, you know, yeah, I think they say that, you know, the, the preferences for in-stream, the, the preferences the current preferred practice of management is of relatively clean sediment impounded behind a dam as part of a removal project is to manage it in stream. Um, I just, you know, I happen to know because I'm on the NMI StarMet committee that, you know, they may be looking for clean fill. So like if there's a, you know, just down mainstream. Mm -hmm. So if there's an opportunity to mm -hmm. help each economically other. Yeah. find a way to dispose of um, sediment, you know, clean sediment in uh, a nearby way that might be efficacious. It might be something that we have them look at. So sure. I just wanted to throw that out there because I know that 229 Main Street may be looking for clean fill. Um, the second comment is um, under task four, uh, you talk about trail and boardwalk opportunities on town land uh, to be evaluated. I just wanted to highlight what I had made at the public hearing about um, other access considerations as well, because I think, you know, access to the Bruce Freeman Rail, there's like just a lot of access um, opportunities that I think should be looked at and evaluated as, uh, you know, one of the criteria that's really important. Um, but you've already put a bunch in there. Uh, I just think, you know, we want to look at all kinds of different access considerations. And then the main comment that I have is really under task five, as you alluded to. Um, and I'm hearkening back to that, you know, our we have a two phase goal here. One is to move forward the dam removal proposal, but also to address public access. So, you know, under the dam removal scenario is is pointed out here. Um, in the last paragraph of task five, you know, I just wonder if we want to, people did ask if a larger pool could be retained and expanded by a dredging along the northwestern boundary of Warner's Pond footbridge under the dam removal scenario. But I think there was public feedback saying, what about expanding that pond under a non-dam removal scenario, which mm. was this side channel pond. And um, I, I, I think that, you know, we do want to make sure that we address public feedback. So mm -hmm. I think we need to do some more due diligence on that. And I don't think it's fair to just say, you know, well, we're moving forward with the dam removal without at least having some thought given to why, you know, if a, if a side channel pond could work or why it won't work. And, um, you know, I recognize that John Coleman, who was an advocate of this scenario, really wanted to ensure that um, whatever consultant was selected for this project have experience with dam removal. I, I guess I don't feel like I need to be, or we need to be that strident, but I, I do think we could add under the conditions for consultants or, or I don't know, qualifications. Mm -hmm. If there's a statement of qualifications for the consultant, we might add something you know, indicating that prior experience with side channel ponds or joint ventures with firms who have experience with side channel ponds are encouraged. Okay. We don't have to say it's a requirement, but I think yeah. we could at least in the terms of reference state that that's encouraged and see what we get. And um, I just, I, I really feel like we do need to be able to address it. And I don't feel qualified to address the feasibility of a side no. channel pond. No. And I think that if this TOR is our opportunity as a commission to gather technical information that's going to help us address public feedback, I really think we need to be able to provide an answer. So I think mm -hmm. this is our opp opportunity to get some due diligence on what is feasible, what's not feasible, what would be the cost, you know, whatever. I don't know what. Yep. So I'll forward that to okay. you Perfect. deal with okay. Great Karen. comments. Yeah. No, I don't think that was I, Gary. I I completely agree with you. That that's exactly the paragraph that I would have I marked. Yeah, good, good. Nick, Just, any any comments? Yeah, one trivial one. There are two task fives. <laughs> um, well, okay. making them work extra hard. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. He is correct. <laughs> yeah, 
Well, I was commenting on both tasks. Both. <laughs> so, oh, you go. But, uh, I'll send my comments and you can amend them. Are we good at the commission level? Yeah. 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 All right. Any any uh, further public comment in regard to this uh, scope of work for a consultant? Yeah, please come on up. Just name and address for the record. Paul Denaro, 189 Commonwealth Avenue. Good evening, Paul. Just the guys from the band. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad to hear that you you want public comment yep. about this dam removal. This is absolutely ridiculous. Well, Paul, actually, we're just looking for if you have comments on the particular proposal uh, here. Okay. Uh, well, I do have something to say. Okay, please. Okay. Now, you spoke at the meeting, the last meeting that we had at Hollywood, yeah. and you brought up, I think, about the fish ladder, and that hasn't been brought up tonight. It was uh, another, yeah, another gentleman brought up the idea of the fish ladder in association with this idea of a side channel pond. Right. Okay, this morning, I talked with the town manager's office in Bellrica, mm -hmm. and the Talbot Mill Dam is not being torn down. Really? No, because the town, it, it affects the town's water supply. Right. And they will give them no guarantee that they will have a water supply if that dam is torn down. Wow. Well, that's something for... To be investigated. Yeah, I appreciate you bringing that to our attention. Yeah, Thank you. That's good. That's I appreciate good. that. Yeah. Well, that's all I have to say, really. Thank well, you. That's pretty important. That's yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Thank you. We all learn, we learn as we go. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I think we have a hand up on Zoom. All right. Is that Anna? Yes. Hi, I'm Anna Feldwig, um, 343 Commonwealth. So I'm in a butter to the pond. I'm also really relieved to hear that there is going to be more investigation. Um, and I would just confirm what Paul just said. That's been in the paper that the Bill Ricca Dam is is on hold and there's legal action about it. Um, I'm curious about why I think that the pond issue came to the Natural Resource C Commission initially because people wanted help cleaning up the pond. But it really strikes me that the recreation department should be equally involved because this is really an issue of, I mean, there's the issue of the pond and what's best for Neshoba Brook, but then there's the issue of what recreational value different options can bring to Giroux Park and to West Concord. So why isn't the recreation department equally involved? I, I believe that all at all the community meetings to date on this, the rec director has been present and she has spoken at those meetings. So I, I believe they're fully up to speed and involved in yeah. every step. Yeah, so the recreation department has been involved. Um, what we're just looking at here is this the scope of work. But they they have been involved throughout this. So do they have, I mean, they, they were present, I know, but um, do they have opinions about the different recreational I'm options? Sure I, they, I'm sure they will. I, I know they did speak up at at both hearings, and I'm sure they'll be fully involved going forward as well. Certainly okay. an important component. Yeah. I mean, can the public, um, does the public have a way of knowing sort of path through which these decisions, like who who's presenting to who about the different things so that we can follow along? Everything is public record. So as you know, as soon as the contract is let, all the work product is public record for everybody's you know, review and of course there'll be community meetings in regard as to follow up on this. So again, those are all everything's in the public domain. Okay, so how do we find it? Well, it's, well, you'll you'll find it. At, I'm sure Bird is going to be on the NRC as well as on the website as well as perhaps other websites as well that are recreation, etc. Yeah. But so the NRC has a specific mandate, right, around protection of wetland resources. Yes. So we're yes. undertaking a, a terms of reference for consulting to help us understand within our mandate, our aspects of this project. And perhaps we would be the committee that might take a motion to town meeting. That doesn't mean that the Recreation Commission doesn't have its own mandate around recreation facilities and, you know, developing an open space and recreation plan. And in their public meetings, they would discuss those aspects. But the professional staff does the coordination between, so the Delia, the director of 
land resource management or whatever her title is, you know, she coordinates resource. natural resource yeah, management, uh, coordinates with the director of uh, recreation and that's where the coordination is handled. But each committee is looking within their own mandate. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Appreciate your comment. Mm -hmm. I don't see any other comments to you, Bert. I do, I do not. All right. Let's see. I think with that, uh, we've got some three, is it three or two administrative approvals? So it's two. Um, so that first one is that's Town of Concord 6B Lowell Road, and that's also going to include a tree at 351 Commonwealth. That's a Norway maple. Okay. It's not, in, not in great shape. Okay. Um, and the, 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 the other tree, which is a little closer to Warner's Pond there, um, it's actually on this small piece of land that our GIS shows up as town property. So mm. that's why it's under Town of Concord. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So those standard tree removal, nothing. Yep. yep. We're nope. going to leave snags. Okay, great. Yep. All right. And on the Newberry Fields? Yep. The invasives removal. Yeah. Um, yep, Delia was looking at that, so she left that little description at the, at the end. But good to go on it. Yeah, I don't have any real issues yeah, with yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, I, and we don't need a motion on any of these, so I think we're good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. And I think with that, we are adjourned for the evening.